Welcome to Monday's edition of Renew. I'm Pastor Tony Cowan. Thanks for joining us and let's get right to the point today. We were talking last week and again this week about the subject of trusting God, learning to trust in the Lord with all of our heart and lean not to our own understanding, our own ways ourselves. You know, that is possible. But there are things or principles in the Word of God that we're discovering that will help us learn to do that. And again, trust is a relationship issue. You only trust someone and you only trust God to the degree of which you know that person, or the degree to which you know God. So the more we know God, the better we'll be able to trust Him with all of our heart. See, we trust in the Lord with all of our heart when we know what's in His heart. Now, there's a lot of people who really think in their own minds that they trust God with all of their heart. But in reality, when they uh, are met with adversity or a challenge, they fall apart like a $2 suitcase. <laughs> and that's not good. That, is a, that, that should be a revealing point to us of really what's in our heart and where we are. Now, you know, it's kind of like a, a person floating on a raft out in the middle of a, a big lake somewhere. And, uh, you know, everything's going fine and they're comfortable but you know then a bird some big bird lands on their raft and pokes a hole in the raft and the air comes out and they start to sink well, we're going to find out real quick <laughs> what they're made of you know we have to take an honest look at ourselves sometimes and i'm not talking about a witch hunt i'm not talking about you know trying to find something wrong all the time fault finding within ourselves. but we need to take an honest look at ourselves and an inventory of our life to see if we're really trusting God in certain areas of our life. In other words, I always when I teach on this, I always say, well, ask yourself, what would I do if per se, I, I didn't have this job anymore? I, if I didn't have these investments or this kind of income coming in, or you know, some kind of a pension or a 401k, which are some kind, sometimes kind of shaky. And certainly if you got stocks, you <laughs> wouldn't want to trust in those all the time those those can be good and those can be bad up and down but what if you didn't have those things anymore would you all of a sudden be gripped and paralyzed in fear would you lose your peace would you lose your joy would you stay awake all night with anxiety see all those things only you can a answer those questions on, in an honest manner but what if we didn't do that what if you went to the doctor and got a bad report of a terminal illness or an incurable terminal illness or something along that line. You know, how would you react? Would you, uh, again, be gripped in fear, paralyzed in fear? Would you lose your peace and joy in life? Uh, you know, those things, if we have anxieties and fears in our life about certain things, that's an indication that we're probably not trusting God completely with all of our heart in those areas. Now, I'm not talking about the emotions and the feelings of fear and anxiety that would try to work from the outside in. Of course, those would be there if we were met with challenges. They are met when we're met with challenges and adversity in life and bad reports. But I'm talking about on the inside. Would you be gripped with fear on the inside? Would you lose the peace that you had on the inside? Would you lose the joy? And I'm not talking about happiness, but would you lose your joy on the inside? Well, again, we have to take an honest look at our life to see if we're, we're there or not. But, you know, if, if the answer comes up with an honest reply, I don't know, then we need to go back and look and make sure that we're trusting in the Lord in that particular area. That we are going back to those areas in our life that would cause fear and anxiety and those things. And uh, we need to make sure that we are looking to God because there's a difference between a source and a channel. Now, God is our only source. He's always going to be our only source. There's never going to be a time where He's not our source. He's always the constant there. But He uses many channels, and those channels can change. You know, you might leave a job or lose a job, but those, that's only a channel, uh, or a channel. That is not your source. You know, you may lose sources of income, investments, or whatever may go down, but that doesn't mean that the source has gone away. The source, God, can provide other channels in order to meet our needs, and we need to understand that. And again, we're not talking about not, you know, denying uh, man-made channels and those kind of things, such as medical science. We're not talking about doing that, but at the same time, we ought not to ever look to those man-made institutions and channels 
to be our source. They are channels only. Now, we're going to look real quickly from Psalm 78. Just real quick, we just have a couple of minutes here, but verse number 40. Now, this is talking about the children of Israel. It said, how often they provoked God in the wilderness and grieved him in the desert. Yes, again and again, they tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. You say, well, how do you limit God? Well, we're not limiting him per se or his ability or power, but we can limit him and what he can do in our life. And that's what was happening here. They were limiting God and what he could do for them and through them. Now we go back to verse number 20 and we find out the answer to this. It says uh, in verse 19, yes, they spoke against God. They said, can God prepare a table in the wilderness? Behold, he struck the rock so that the waters gushed out and the streams overflowed. Can he give bread also? Can he provide meat for his people? Those are wrong questions to be asking by. We shouldn't be questioning God's ability here. We should be saying God can do this, not can God do this. And so, uh, of course, the Lord was mad about this because he had already shown himself to be powerful and faithful in their life, and yet they still came to the conclusion they just couldn't trust God. You know why they couldn't trust God? Deuteronomy tells us they, they decided that God hated them, and he brought them out of Egypt because there weren't enough graves in Egypt to bury them all, so he brought them out there in the wilderness to kill them and bury them out there. Well, you know, that is just stupid reasoning right there, but that's what happens when we go into darkness and we lose sight of who God is and we, we're not trusting God. Well, there's other things we could say about this, but that's all the time I've got for today. If you'd like additional resources and materials, go to TonyCowan.org. We'll see you tomorrow.